Hello! Welcome to day 7 of my 30 day drawing challenge. If you like you can also take part and push your creativity with this challenge. You can start whenever you like because it's not necessary to start with the beginning of a month. You can use any medium and style you like, but try to challenge yourself from time to time. If you like you can also show me your creations by using the hashtag HelloRambu but you can also use this hashtag to show me your other drawings. I will put a link to the challenge in the description box so you can simply download it or make a screenshot of it. Try to be creative every day, but if you're not in the mood to draw, it's okay. You can just continue another day. I want to push your creativity, but it's more important to have fun. Take your time to do the challenge at your own pace. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Today's theme is about to create a mix of two mythical creatures. I saw so many great artworks of you doing this challenge on Instagram. There are a lot of awesome and creative mixes between different mythical creatures you create. It's so much fun watching your progress during this challenge. So keep it up! For today's drawing I decided to go for Thai mythology. Most of you maybe only know Greek or Japanese mythology, so I thought it could be more interesting to show you something else. The two creatures I mix are Kinari and Naga. The Kinari is known in the Buddhism mythology and has its roots in Hinduism. Kinari is half human and half bird. Her head, arms and her torso are human. Her lower part is like a swan. In the South Asian mythology, she is a symbol of feminine beauty, grace and accomplishment. Skilled in poetry, singing and dancing. Her lower body part should enable her to fly between the human and the mystical world. Kinon is the male counterpart of Kinari. Both are believed to come from the Himalayas and watch over the well-being of humans in times of trouble and danger. There is also a famous love story of Kinari known as Manora. Kinari Manora was a princess of Thai legend and was the youngest of the seven Kinari daughters of King Pratom and Queen Janta Kinari. She lived in the mythical Mount Graidat kingdom. The seven Kinari appeared as half woman, half swan. They could fly or shed their wings to assume human form as they pleased. Long ago, in the oldest part of Siam, called Panchalanakon, there lived a handsome young man named Prince Suton. He was the only child of King Atitya Wong and Queen Chantatiwi. The young prince was a remarkable young man, handsome, intelligent and kind. It seemed as if he had mastered every grace and showed an aptitude for many skills, but in one sport, archery, he had exceptional ability. In the kingdoms to the east and west of Panchalanakon, Prince Suton was called Good Arrow. Good King Atitya Wong and Queen Shanatiwi were proud of their son and were determined to find him a wife who was beautiful as the roses and as gentle as a doe. The king and queen observed many young ladies, but none of them showed promise of being a gracious and noble queen. One spoke with a harsh twang in her voice. Another lacked grace in her walk. The third was not clever enough. And the fourth was plain. The fifth could not sing sweetly. The sixth could not dance gracefully. The seventh lacked regal poise. When the eighth princess was rejected because she giggled too much, the entire kingdom became concerned. One day, Pran Boon, the most famous hunter in Panchala Nakon, discovered the secret bathing pool used by King Tomarat's seven beautiful daughters. King Tomarat was a great king who ruled over the bird people in the far north. It is said his daughters were the most beautiful young ladies in the world. 
They all wore soft feathered wings that could be removed at will. Without the wings, the bird maidens looked exactly like other girls. When Pranboon saw the seven pairs of feathered wings lying on the grass, he quickly ran to the kind old serpent, the Naga of Champuchit, and borrowed his magic noose. Then he stealthily crept along the bank of the bathing pond and snared Manora, the youngest and fairest of all the bird maidens. Pranboon carried Manora to the palace and presented her to King Atitya Wong and Queen Shantativi. Princess Manora will make an ideal bride for our Prince Sutan, said Boon. Boon's prediction was fulfilled, for Manora's natural loveliness and gentle charm captivated every member of the royal household. Prince Sutan and Prince Manora fell in love, and the entire kingdom rejoiced at the news of their wedding. On the day they were wed, the prince said, Manora, I am the most fortunate man alive. My beautiful bride, I shall do everything I can to bring you happiness. Manora answered, Sutan, my only request is that you never leave my side. When you are near me, I am happy. When I am alone, I think of my father, my sisters and I become sad. Unfortunately, Prince Sutan was forced to leave Manora soon after their wedding. I must help my father's soldiers defeat the enemies who attacked the northern boundary. Please understand, said the prince. I understand, said Manora. The prince asked a trusted friend to take care of Manora. Guard her well, he said. She is the jewel of our kingdom. The treasure of my life. Friend, do not neglect her. Watch her night and day, and as a reward for your service, I shall make you the royal court counselor. Sutan's friend promised, and all would have gone well except for one thing. The old court counselor had overheard the conversation. Late that night, King Atitya Wong had a most strange dream. He called the court counselor and said, Last night in my sleep I saw my intestine unwind from my body. It rose like an enormous rope and wrapped itself around the entire kingdom of Panchalanakon. What does it mean? The jealous old man immediately saw a way to save his position. He rubbed his chin and looked very wise and he said, Your Highness, your dream is a sign that a great evil will soon fall upon you, your family and the kingdom. So great is this evil that all may die in its grasp. The king sat up very straight and whispered, How can we prevent this evil from coming? There's only one way to appease the gods, your highness, said the court counselor. I do anything you say, murmured the king. You must make a blood sacrifice. You must sacrifice the bad woman. No, shouted the king. Prince Sutan loves Manora more than anything in this world. Does she mean more to you and the prince than your own beloved queen and all your subjects? The king had no choice. Cliffhanger! It's a quite long story, so I will not read everything for you, uh, but I will put the whole story in the description box down below, or at least the link to the story. Uh, and yeah, sorry if I pronounce something wrong, I'm just a lookering. So. Naga is a legendary creature out of the Indian mythology. The Buddha's Naga generally has the form of a great cobra, usually with a single head, but sometimes with many. Some of them also can transform themselves into humans. They are also often part of the Thai folklore and are represented as well in temples, but they are also represented in a lot of other Asian countries. While creating this, I realized that both of them combine and represent different counterparts, like sky and earth, or 
air and fire. A lot of you will say, uh, isn't it water and fire? But I don't know. Um, I think uh, the fire cannot live without air. So maybe it's not uh, a counterpart, but but it's just that um, they belong together. But anyways, um, why is there fire? Because Naga can also be seen as a dragon. In the traditional Thai art, the balance between the figures and the sense of each element is important, such as lines in each painting should be in harmony to create a line flow. I really love traditional Thai art and I always wanted to create a full artwork in this style. Um, but there's so much more to learn and it was a truly hard work because of all these details. But it was so much fun at the same time, even if it was exhausting. I would definitely continue to draw in Thai style or learn to draw better in Thai style art. So let's see how um, my future works will look like. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I see you in my next video. Bye bye!